Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm doing a follow-up. Um, this is going to be my last one for today because um, that video that I put up earlier was actually an impromptu one. I got a hold of that article and I was like, this is too good not to share because it's so timely and so important, especially with everything going on. And on Daya Dash, I'm actually banned for a week. My first strike, well, I had prior strikes, but I guess if um, you have to get three strikes in a 90 day period for them to take down your channel. So because that didn't happen on this particular channel, because I had one before called Noble Scribe, and that's what happened. They took me down because it just shows you how evil the agenda is in the sorcery at play, right? So we're going to do a short class just to show you some amazing references because you can tell by the thumbnail, like what does one have to do with the other, right? That's just how research is. It's amazing. Um, I was talking a little bit about, um, you know, pharmacia in the past few vids and I brought up valerian root, how there are some people who recommend it and say like, oh, it's a great sedative. It's great for anxiety. I mean, there's a lot of different herbs that are good for anxiety. Why does it have to be this particular one? There's just a lot of connotations that go with valerian, and I'm sure um, there were towns called Valeria, right? I mean, we've heard different terms with that. So, um... To, for me, it's not something I would use, but you can see how it's in these books. And I've just come across such amazing books and the writers of said books, right? From um, Germany to all these different countries, Finland, I mean. So you're going to see a diverse um, bunch of people. And of course, we do know um, Europe was predominantly ruled uh, you know, there's many different rulers, and you're going to see it was predominantly ruled by melanated people. I can't vouch for all the pictures I'm going to show you, right? But the books themselves are key because you get a lot of terminology in these books that might surprise you. So I started just going down the road with Valerian herb. So we're going to see what we find out. I'm not going to keep myself in the frame the whole time. I didn't know I did that in another vid, guys. Please excuse me. This new um, system I have here is just, um, it's not as easy as the other one I had. So please, please, please forgive me. So valerium, it's, uh, valerian is an herb, also called valeriana officinalis bring that up closer and there's just some um cautions because they you know even in this article i'm sure if you go down the road um even um the medical industry does not recommend you take it while you're pregnant because it can cause birth defects okay so it has sedative um properties and an xylitic and Xylolytic, <clears throat> which is a medication they say that intervenes or reduces anxiety. And they take valeric acid and they actually use it in pharmacia. It says, you know, it helps to promote sleep, they say. Again, you proceed with caution. Just because it's an herb doesn't mean it's great for you, okay? There's good and bad in every situation, okay? Let's think of the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. We just want to make sure we're dealing with the right herbs. So its roots and leaves are also used for a catnap, catnip, catnap, <laughs> I probably need one, catnip like euphoria on many cats. So it affects cats who are seemingly um, unaffected by catnip. And valerian has been used as a medicinal herb since at least the time of ancient Greece and Rome. See, I like that's why I like dealing with the Hebrew customs because some of the things in, you know, obviously with the Greeks and the Romans, they went off. And in Europe, the occults, like the Moors brought in the occult sciences and 
a lot of black magic and herbs that deal with witchcraft so we just got to be careful and I learned a lot just clicking on some of the names of these books and some of the authors and you're gonna see that these were the real textbooks I showed you one in a prior one like these were the books that you would all the doctors were given and the doctors were um, also akin to priests because they were at one time considered doctor priests so you learn a lot so it's been used since the time of Greece and Rome Hippocrates describes its properties and Galen later prescribed it as a remedy for insomnia in medieval Sweden it was sometimes placed in the wedding clothes of the groom to ward off the envy of the elves don't you love that? The elves, guys, they exist. In the 16th century, Pilgrim Mark Beck prescribed valerian tea for a sick woman. So I learned a lot just going down this one here, this John Gerald's Herbal or General History of Plants, first published in 1597, states that his contemporaries found valerian excellent for those burdened and for such as be troubled with croup and other like convuls you know convulsions and also those who are bruised with falls well i read in another article that low vitamin c can cause that you know so again be careful and i guess it's under the influence of mercury the so-called deity the 17th century astrological botanist Nicholas Culpepper thought the plant was under the influence of mercury and therefore has a warming faculty. So he has his little concoction there, but it has really strong alkaloids and um, they're really into the milky sap and a lot of these herbs we deal with the leaves and the flowers okay so you can see that you know with, it almost looks like a poppy the alkaloids see how you know in this particular so it has very strong um constituents okay and it's also been used for heavy sedation like heavy because it's in the same class as benzodiazepines benzos I mean that's some strong shit anybody in the you know that has any type of street knowledge knows that right any type of street smarts uh, valeric acid which is responsible for the typical odor um, of the roots they use too and it's prescribed see how they use it I mean they have their issues too if you go down the road of valproic acid I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of side effects and they show you a little bit on this one of course they'll tr they'll give they'll make all these lofty health claims you know and just because traditional medicine that can um you know could that just means the era before you know modern so-called chemical medicine but they were using a lot of wild stuff, you know? And adverse effects, they should not be used with other depressants such as ethanol, drinking alcohol, other benzodiazepines, barbiturates, opiates, kava, it's kava. Mm, see, did you even know? Even with this herb, that, that's probably another sedation, see? Again, a lot of people push a lot of um, herbal stuff in the name of that and you're gonna see this is all over the place this is considered like a dietary supplement now you know but would I take it no you know again your decision because it also has potential for toxicity I mean if it has toxicity potential for the fetus and hepatotoxicity in the mother <clears throat> And if it's discouraged during pregnancy, it should be discouraged every other time. I mean, it's a beautiful flower, but still. And a lot of people, um, just like in the Book of Enoch, didn't the fallen teach the knowledge of root cuttings and all that, too? So, of course, it has little white flowers. It's just good to have 
an understanding of what these look like. Because I touched on this because I was saying there are people out there who are saying, Oh, this is so great for you. You really need that to have a good night's sleep. Um, you might get, you probably get like a sleep paralysis probably. You probably have a hard time even getting up. I think that's a little much. And um, they use this acid and pharma pharmacokinetics of course they try to whatever they can now they'll give it to you for this for this for this but look what the contraindications are and this is the extract they got from the plant and you got all oh severe liver inflammation hepatitis mm-hmm oh particularly medicine related no shit known hypersensitivity to valproic mm-hmm urea cycle disorders nice uh, hepatic porphyria a liver disorder mitochondrial disease guys I mean this can get a little crazy pancreatitis ooh porphyria another liver disorder it's all about getting that liver and the most common one, low body temperature. Look, it even has a black box one. And what the hell? <laughs> Feed. All right, guys. Um, I know you're going to say, oh, but this is a stretch. No, this is like the active constituent. You know, the acid came. You know, they got that from the plant. But you'll get a lot more interesting stuff, you know, reading this. And look, encephalopathy. I mean, seriously, that's like your brain swelling. That's pretty crazy shit. All these things here in case you're on your phone. Ah, of course we're back down here. But, um, common, common side effects. You could just stay up here. Liver failure. Ah, dry mouth. Suicide risk. You get really depressed. Yeah. And kind of funny how these are all the um, side effects, but then they want to use this as a medication against mental illness okay there in migraines and bipolar and epilepsy okay but the side effects will cause all those things in suicide okay and they don't tell you what the root cause of a lot of these things are spiritual warfare probably cell phone use a lot of mineral deficiencies cause migraines too You'd be surprised uh, there's just a lot of things, guys. A lot of people getting seizures. Yeah, they're also rolling out 5G, probably, you know. Valproate. And the acid. And it's like, you get it from the herb. What do you think? It's all the same. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. Valerian extract, man. Valerian extract. And we were right here these extracts they get from the plant duh in case you didn't know so I got that from the herb and then I clicked on this little number herbal of you know so I got really great um interest in reads and different books how they have all the, look out the you know this is these were the real science books or the barnacle tree the goose tree pretty wild so let's see what I got out of this and I got another character too but you get all the different authors of the time John Gerald was an English herbalist um, with a large garden in Holborn now part of London his 1484 page illustrated herbal or Gina general his story of Plantes, first published in 1597, became a popular gardening and herbal book in English in the 17th century. It, um, except for some added plants from his own garden and from North America, Gerald's Herbal is largely a plagiarized English translation of Rembrandt Dodo ends. So this character was really interesting. 
He was a Flemish physician, guys, and botanist in 1554 herbal. Remember, I did a video showing that the herbals were the um, plant uh, holistic books that would break down their medicinal purposes and whatnot. So it was um, highly popular in Dutch, Latin, French, and other English translations. Gerald's herbal drawings of plants and the printer's woodcuts are mainly derived from continental European sources, but there is an original title page with a copper plate engraving by William Rogers. Interesting. Um, I guess he was an English engraver. Mm -hmm. uh, two decades after Gerald's death, the book was corrected and expanded to about 1,700 pages. And I went to Rembert's page, too, and then I got a lot of great, um, just interesting things from him, too. So, this character, um, circa, so in the 1500s, you get a lot of these books, a lot of these writers, and to show you, this was the esteemed reference at the time, these type of books. And he was born Rembert von Jona, Jonen Kima was a Flemish physician and botanist, also known under his Latinized name, Rembertus Dodonius. He has been called the father of botany. Interesting. So you got a little bit of him. He, um, <clears throat> Flemish. The books were beautiful. Turkish corn. I guess his book was called the Crudi Bach, 1554. Which is beautiful. And uh, Dodo Enns was born Rember von Jokima in Mechelen, which was then the capital of the Spanish Netherlands. I didn't know that. Which was the name for the Habsburg Netherlands, ruled by the Spanish branch of the Habsburgs from 1556 to 1714. Interesting. So, um, his parents were Dennis von Jonkima and Ursula Rolantz. So, they're Frisian in origin, their names, which is a Germanic ethnic group. Its members were active in politics and jurisprudence in Frisland which is a province of the Netherlands, located in the country's north part. So I guess, um, and some had moved in 1516 to Mechelen. His father was one of the municipal ph physicians in Mechelen and a private physician to Margaret of Austria, governor of the Netherlands in her final illness. Margaret of Austria's court was based in Mechelen. Rembert later changed his last name to Dodoans, literally son of Dodo, a form of his father's name, Dennis or Dodi. And his influences were Otto Brunfels, Jerome Bach, which was a German botanist. Who knows if those are the right pitches? Probably not. Leonard Fuchs, so Fuchs. So there's a couple of names, and they were really great with these books. So I've been learning a lot just going into it. And he was um, educated um, at the Municipal College in Mechelen before beginning his studies in medicine, cosmography, and geography at the age of 13 at the University of Levon under Arnold Newt, Leonard Wilmeyer, John Hems and Paul Rosewear. So he graduated in 1535, as was the custom of the time, began extensive travels, which is called Wander Yaren in Europe, including Italy. He did this um, until 1546. He traveled through Italy, Germany, France. In 1539, he became married. So you really go, because then, um, you know, this is the book that I showed, I believe, in my last one. 
But there was several, but there's several really great books. I mean, look at just the, the artistry that went into this. This is title page of part six of the Grudy Boek, 1554. I mean, I have a lot of um, respect for this era and this time. So in the early 16th century, the general belief was that the plant world had been completely described by Dioscorides in his De Materia Medica. During Dodoin's lifetime, botanical knowledge was undergoing enormous expansion, partly fueled by the expansion of the known plant world by New World exploration. The discovery of printing and the use of woodblock illustration. This period is thought of as a botanical renaissance. Europe became fascinated with natural history from the 1530s and gardening and cultivation of plants became a passion and prestigious pursuit from monarchs to universities. The first botanical gardens appeared as well as the first illustrated botanical encyclopedias together with thousands of watercolors and woodcuts. So it's so beautiful. See how like it was so well respected and now we've been so trained ass backwards. So um, very interesting. Collecting became a discipline specifically the Kunst und Wander Kammern, cabinets of curiosities outside of Italy and the study of naturalia became widespread through many social strata. The great botanists of the 16th century were all like Dodoans originally trained as physicians who pursued a knowledge of plants not just for medicinal properties but in their own right. Chairs in botany with medical facilities were being established in European universities throughout the 16th century in reaction to this trend and the scientific observation, documentation, and experimentation was being applied to the study of plants. See guys, so this just gives more credence when people say, what you're doing isn't scholarly. It's like, you are such a toad. Go drink a bottle of chemicals and call it a day. I mean, really, I mean, they're trying to tell you to take, you know, um, chemical potions and pill forms like it's supposed to help you and then you're crazy if you don't want to you know be bullied and harassed into being a you know a can't a chemical container right just to what be a pin cushion for all their toxic waste I think not and you see what the real healing comes from I mean so I love these affluent books to show more credence, right? To what a lot of us already knew instinctively, right? That the healing comes from herbs, right? And not drugs or synthetic, synthetic pills, etc. Mm, I'm doing my herbal tea right now, guys. You just got to drink it prophylactically. <clears throat> I'm not feeling bad at all. I just drink it to make sure I feel... Um, in tip-top shape. So it's um, and right here Otto Brunfels published his Herbarium in 1530 followed by those of Jerome Bach 1539. Yeah like this Jerome was really this guy. <laughs> Probably not. We already knew who was ruling at the time. You know the Holy Roman Black Empire weren't they ruling around these these times so it tells you a lot um i found a lot more characters too i don't have a lot of time to go into it i gotta get back to my work this was the only time i had to myself to even um fit this vid in so um and kurt sprengel were later so these gentlemen were called the german fathers of botany these men all influenced dodoans who was their successor 
So his initial works were published in the fields of um, cosmography and physiology. His De Frugum Historia, 1552, a treatise on cereals, vegetables, and fodders. What's fodders? I guess it's uh, agricultural food stuff used specifically to feed domesticated livestock. I guess that's what um, fodder, also called provender, marked the beginning of a distinguished career in botany. His herbal crudy book, I guess this means book what is crudy mean herb with 715 images was influenced by early german botanists particularly that of leonhard fuchs of the germans in the crudy boak 1515 were borrowed from leon leonhard fuchs new credo booklin 1543 while 200 new drawings were drawn by Peter von der Bach, the elder, and the woodcuts cut by Arnold Nikolai. So there's a lot that goes into that, right, with the woodcuts and stuff. Rather than the, tra the traditional method of arranging the plants in alphabetical order, the Crudy Bach divided the plant kingdoms into six groups. Deal based on their properties and affinities. It treated in detail especially the medicinal herbs, which made this work, in the eyes of many, a pharmacopoeia. This work and its various editions and translations, so you see that picture, guys? So, see, these are obviously the medical textbooks of the day and translations became one of the most important botanical works of the late 16th century. Part of its popularity being his use of the vernacular rather than the commonly used Latin. So, and this English version became a standard work in that language. In his times, it was the most translated book after the Bible. It became a work of worldwide renown, used as a reference book for two centuries. The Crude Box Latin version, published in 1583, was a considerable revision. It contains new families, enlarged the number of groups from 6 to 26, and included many new illustrations, both original and borrowed so look at that this is what i'm going to use as my thumbnail as you can tell but it almost looks like it has a mason you see at the bottom this symbol here and it shows you even in the royal courts they all had like really amazing um didn't at the time uh people of renown right they had crazy botanical gardens they had all the medicinal herbs i mean you see that you know with the castles and all that they were really big on that stuff like it was part of the architecture even a lot of the universities it was like open architecture and you'd get a lot of these plants and stuff i mean people have really fallen off this was really i always do that guys i'm sorry people have fallen off on this information for a long time they think oh chemicals that's why i like going down these roads i actually found other characters too but again um the time i i just heard uh, i think I, I have a package outside i better go grab it too if that was for me i'm expecting somebody um some packages um so he had even um when he passed, it was posthumous works that were, um, I believe, published. But um, there's different universities that these books are still located. So um, definitely, Dodo, Dodo ends. I know you think of Dodo. He was no Dodo, that's for damn sure. I think last night um, I was clicking on more of like the different museums and stuff that hold a lot of these books. I'll have to go down, you know, these roads. I don't want to make this long because I had other names too if I went on my phone and did some more clicking. Because I might have, like, clicked on this guy to this Iranius bot character. So, 
in German, you know, I'm very interested. I don't, you know, you have to really use your discernment when it comes to these pictures. And for anybody who don't know, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe because Bach is German for male goat. Who freaking knows? Who freaking knows? German for male goat, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but um, people know the original Germans were melanated, just saying. So, you know, he could have been a male goat. Um, Lutheran, um, Holy Roman Empire. So, yeah, look up who was ruling at the time. Um, there, are be there are way better channels, right? Like K the KMZ channel. I put people on to that channel um, a while back. I think a week ago or two weeks ago, um, he already breaks all that down. But I like going into the literature, and we all have our own starting points. Like somebody may start off on, um, you know, a topic that they're going down. It could be movies, it could be scripture, it could be whatever. I came in the road of holistic medicine because I knew through scripture that that was the real source of healing, and I'm finding so many connections, and it's kind of like we converge, you know. And all these videos, it's never about competition. It's all about collaboration. That is the, the level we need to be on in this day and age. It's too late in the game. There's too much going on. So, you know, like I tell people too, my information's there. You want to sample it. I even put a lot of um, links and references. I mean, that takes time too to remember to do that. A lot of people don't even remember to do that. Right? They're so quick to just give you their PayPal. Hey, PayPal. me. All right, well, where's the, uh, half the links? I wanted the links that you were reading from. Um, They won't even give you that, right? So it's like, whatever. Everyone teach their own. This is a collaboration. You know, you got to be on that vibe. But um, a lot of um, interesting references for this um, gentleman, too. Um, he is noted for having the first documented use of the modern word Risling in 1552, which is the wine. Some people like the white grape variety. When it was mentioned in his Latin herbal box, description of oak apples is noted in the entomologist database. Hmm. The grass green so some things are named after these people there was another character i guess this wasn't him but it was one one of the fathers of so-called why is it redirected what's that going to show us it doesn't show us much that it had like another secret page they're trying to i guess there's another one where it names him but this is an interesting character and there was um another one too of course, I don't know which link, but this one also to another a German botanist. Again, don't, you know, those pictures, don't know, but um, I guess the name Fuchsia is named after this person. So you're going to get a lot of interesting stuff. And um, his chief nobili notability is as the author of a large, let me get my face out of there so I can show you that better. Um, there was a, the uh, being an author of a large book about plants and their uses as medicines and herbal, which was first published in 1542 in Latin. It has about 500 accurate and detailed drawings of plants which were printed from woodcuts which that's great too and I guess that's how like you know books were made with literally on wood so and also plates and all that we've heard of that the drawings are the books most notable advanced so he did more of like the drawings um too um I think maybe with the pages so um the drawings are the book's most notable advance on its predecessors, although drawings had been used in other herbal books. Fuchs herbal book proved and emphasized high quality drawings as the most telling way to specify what a plant name stands for. So just a lot of credentials to 
um, I learned so much, I guess, um, fuchsia, there's a plant that was discovered in the Dominican Republic in the Caribbean by the French scientists in the 17th century, and a minim monk, Charles Plumier, interesting character, never heard of him before, Min minim monk. So this was like a huge industry and they got magenta you go into how they got a lot of these colors and these dyes and stuff and um, <clears throat> right here I know um, this was interesting in which he argued for the use of simples herbs are called simples rather than the noxious or dangerous compounds of arcane ingredients concocted in medieval medicine. It's kind of what they're doing now. These noxious compounds of arcane, and you know, these are really old, ancient, dangerous ingredients. So that's a wood from a wood cup. So isn't that just amazing? It's just some of these characters, the real early physicians. Of course, these letters are just too big. I can't um, see everything that I read last night. I'm kind of just doing a simple paraphrase and I'm gonna close out because my package is, is outside you know got some arrowroot powder gonna make my own natural deodorants guys I mean really um, not trying to get any premature cancer from you know mutating from all the stuff so this is just really interesting um, he was born in 1501 in the Duke of Bavaria so all these interesting, notable people, and I got this all from studying a little bit of Valerian. Isn't that just so interesting? You go back to John Gurd, you know, because of these books. These books are pretty wild stuff. Did I go into William Rogers? I don't think I went into that, but you could too. Look at that lady. That so-called Queen Elizabeth standing in a room. That the real Queen Elizabeth, who knows with these people, who knows. Well, I just thought that was wild valerian. Be careful. Um, you know, you're going to have it. This really came from this too because people, um, they think, oh, I find it at a, you know, herbal store or a vitamin store. It means it's okay. It means I'm not going to have any toxic effects. Well, not all herbs are good herbs, okay? Be careful because they've used a lot of different herbs like this. And um, it will have adverse effects because if you know how that's done, it's by a lot of these alkaloids, guys. And they have like this milky substance that they drain out and they'll, um, you know, they'll mix with all these other chemicals and you'll get your type of drugs that are in the benzos class. They already said that this particular herb is that powerful that, you know, that's why you got to worry about people on the road, people doing what they do. You don't know what they're on, guys, right? There's no way to know. There's no way to know. That's why I worry about people constantly. I do. I worry about people constantly on the road, what, what they're up to. And um, now they know people are getting smarter to all the pharmacia and all the different um, sorcery and the chemical warfare. So they're really going to stop pushing a lot of these stuff. But even in some of these texts, you know, just because some of these writers were, um, you know, promoting some of these herbs, don't make it quote unquote okay a lot of them were dabbling in the occult okay a lot of them do things that are very psychedelic and it can open up the, it could just have a toxic effect and there's so many other amazing herbs i mean i'm doing elderberry right now you can do rosemary you can do thyme you can do whatever that you like that tastes good raspberry leaf you know um echinacea is pretty good pine needle i mean the Most High has so much already to choose from. We don't need to get fancy with it. We don't need to get too funky with it. You know what I mean? He 
he already gave us the simple herbs needed. We don't need to go to the noxious arcane ingredients. People don't like what's good for them. They really don't. But I went into some of this history because I did go into another video and I showed the different herbals. And of course I don't see it now because they were talking about doctor, priest, and whatnot. Oh, is this it here? This is it here. In the preface, um, Gerald acknowledges priest's effort. Oh, well that was his um, surname. But they are considered priests though. They are considered priests. Um, you know, a lot of them. This character was interesting too. This Jacobus, again, don't know if that's his real picture. Theodorus Taber named Monte. I went through this. This was in a lot of different herbalists considered the father of German botany. Again, with the name like Jacob, he could be melanated. I mean, if you really look, right? Maybe. Because, like, just the way they, they colored it, it's hard to know. And so, um, he has a very extensive knowledge, so. Um, in a lot of different books, so he could be another character. I can go into it too because he was the private physician to Philip II, Count of Nassau Saarbrücken. So, a lot of great works. I mean, this is ancient stuff, a lot, you know, so, you know, with the herbals that are out there, but a lot of these um, characters, I think he had some type of herb that was kind of. Um, interesting because of the effects named after him but um he served as um as a city physician to the free imperial city i found this um place worms germany very interesting the term worms because if you ever watch game of thrones remember the dragon queen the blonde and she had like the army of like melanated men ready to fight for her Weren't they calling themselves worms? Were they the original um, Germanic tribes, maybe? Possibly, possibly. But he had a tree. I guess this was a flower. Beautiful flower named after him. But it has a milky sap, just like with opium, just like with poppy. So who knows what this does to you. So he has this named after him. Hey, it could have happened after he passed, whatever. But from a plant, um, you know, species, the the family Milkwood. So you got this is named after him and has a lot of, you know, they want to make this the new class of painkillers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why not? Why not? So you can really go into it. I guess that's what, you know, they commemorated him. And they got a lot of other different plants. So you'd be surprised, these names, and they're all over. Named after um, the people who were studying botany. And botany was very, very respected around this time. And now you talk about plants, people think you're some type of hillbilly hippie. I'm like, whatever. And you got... Um, I guess, um, yeah, these are the so-called Europeans that went into Africa and started, you know, um, analyzing everything and trying to label everything, right? But um, they say it happened after his death that they labeled um, this plant. So I just thought that was another interesting character, too. Just so much you can go into. I don't have that type of time today. Let me get out of here. I guess his hometown... Uh, Berg Zabern, Berg, got a lot of people with that Berg name, in the Palatinate, was a state, look at that with the lion, Palatinate, was a state that was part of the whole Holy Roman Empire, so they still have these, these books today in hiding, you think that they don't have their famous gardens and everything else, their special herbal gardens for them, oh you bet your ass they do, who knows what kind of psychedelics they're taking as well, but I don't advocate that. I wanted to bring this up because I brought up the valerian root, and I know a lot of people are misguided when they take that. They think, oh, it's an herb. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but you don't know how that's going to affect you. 
and there's a lot of toxicity and they're even saying you shouldn't even take that if you're pregnant because it could cause deformities with the baby so you don't think that can cause deformities with you as well you know I, I would just be careful you could have adverse effects some people are gonna say oh I took it and I feel fine I gotta be responsible with the information that I stand on you know I can only speak on what I know I never had to take that and I've been around a lot of stuff in my life and I just don't find the need to have to take that but if you um you know find that you take it um and you have no problem with it that's on you I it's not something that I would recommend others to take is all but I just wanted to show you some of these books weren't they so great um yeah check them out wonderful pictures just to give more validity to the herbal medicine always being the real medicine and it was very respected in its day and now it's being suppressed marginalized for what the place of uh stupid you know chemical versions how are we doing as a society are we any better i don't think so thank you so much guys i hope you have a wonderful day i hope that you walk in on uh, purpose i hope the most high keeps you safe and alert to all the deception that is going on and i'm going to get back to it i appreciate your time and i will talk to you soon okay take care now